Hello folks, Librarian Matthew Smith here. In this video we're going to look at how to use Scopus. You'll need to start by going to my.uea.ac.uk and then selecting Explore My Library. From here go to A to Z Databases and finally locate Scopus under the S category. It's important you go this route because if you simply Google for Scopus and click through, the database won't know that you're from UEA and won't give you full access. Sometimes when you click through, you'll be presented with a box that asks you whether you want to log in or go straight to the resource. Your best option is to go straight to the resource, as having clicked through one of our links, you should be recognised as a UEA staff or student member. Like most databases, Scopus offers a fairly straightforward search on its opening page. We'll put in a simple search as an example. Let's imagine I'm looking for papers about cognitive therapy and its treatment of anxiety. I'll put into the first box cognitive behavioural therapy or CBT and then into my second box anxiety. All of the operators I use here are fairly standard but we'll flash up a summary of the key operators you're likely to want to use. On Scopus, you'll find that there are a large number of fields that you can select. And in this case, I think I'm going to look quite specifically. So I'll say article title for both fields. This means that each paper that comes up must have either cognitive behavioral therapy or CBT in its title and anxiety. And we can see that that's 1,682 papers. Down the left hand side of the page, I have options for limiting the results. And let's say that I would like the most up to date research. So wish to only see results from 2020 to 2022. To do this, I select all three years. And then I scroll to the top of the limiter column. And I select the limit two. You have the option also to exclude, so if I hadn't wanted to see results from those years, I'd have clicked the exclude button. As it is, I can see that 396 documents were published that meet my criteria between 2020 and 2022. Now there are a range of limiters you can use down the left hand side, but I wanted also to flag for you the analyze search results function. This is something you don't see in a lot of databases and is incredibly helpful in my opinion. Clicking on this will show you an overview of the documents that you have in your list. So in our case, the 396 results we've just seen. It then presents the data about these papers in various different ways. So we can see which years had the most publications, which countries our results are coming from, and let's say in terms of countries, we wanted to just see papers that are based in the UK or connected to the UK in some way. So it may be that one of the authors was British, even if the research took place elsewhere. Geography is, after all, quite a tricky thing to define when it comes to database searching. And in fact, we can then click on analyse search results again for just the 58 results. And there you'll see that the documents are not only tagged with UK, we've got other other geographies included there but let's say we can look at the funding sponsor and this is really useful for when you're researching a topic area when you know you want to publish a paper or you know you want to start with some research you can look at who's funding research in this area you can look at which journal articles are most commonly publishing in this area you can explore a whole lot via Scopus but let's go back to searching We've set up a multi-field search here, but let's say we wanted to put each term in individually and then combine together. One of the main reasons that you may wish to do this on other databases is that it will allow you to roll in index terms, for example, mesh terms. On Scopus, you don't have that option. You are only able to use free text terms. However, line by line searching can still be really helpful in identifying which terms are working well and which are perhaps not working so well. 
So to run line by line searching, we will simply put one term at a time into our search boxes, run each in turn, and then we will combine them together after that. Once all three of my terms have been put in, I'll now need to combine them. On most databases, the way to do this is to navigate to your search history and there you'll find an option for combining terms. However, if you scroll to the search history on the main searching page of Scopus, you'll not find an obvious way of combining, and so you'll need to go to the advanced document search. From this page, if you scroll down to your search history, you'll have slightly more options. And you'll see, in the top right hand corner of your search history, a combine queries field. Into this, we'll put the line references combined with ors and ands that relate to our search. In Scopus, it's important that you put a hash before each line number so that it's clear this refers to a line rather than to something you wish to search. And we'll see that we're back to the 1682 results. So this search should not generate any more or fewer results than putting all the terms in together as you build up the search one step at a time, exactly what's going on with all elements of your search. We'll limit it back to the 2020 to 2022 date range and the same 396 documents we had there a few minutes ago are now on our screen again. Now if you were happy with your search and wanted to save it, the first thing you'll need to do is make sure you have a Scopus account. I already have one set up, but unless you've personally set yours up, you won't. Accessing the resource is done using your UEA login, but to save searches you would need to create your own account, and that can be done from the profile option in the top right hand corner. Once you have your account, to save your search you have the option to either click the save button which appears underneath the search on the results page, or you can go back to the search pages and from within your search history, you will have an option to save each line of your search. So for me, I'm just going to take our most recent search, the one that I'd consider my final search in this example. And if I were to click on the more option at the right end of the line that I wish to save, I again have the save search option. This is exactly the same as if I've clicked the save button underneath the search on the results page. And I'll be prompted to put a name in. I'll just put example, but I'd encourage you to put something quite specific so that if you come back at a later date, you always remember what the search was. And that's it. The search has been saved as confirmed at the top of my screen. Now if I wanted to come back and rerun the search, I would click on my profile and say saved searches. From here, you'll find a few saved searches if like me you've done a few examples and you have a couple of options if you wish to rerun the search from the point at which you last run it to the current day you have the date last run column to the right of that you also have the option to edit or to delete the search but if we click on last date run the search is rerun now now no results were found because this is simply a display of results that have come up since we last run the search. As we only ran it two minutes ago, clearly nothing else has been indexed. But that's a really useful tool for if you were to come back several months later and just want to see new papers that have been indexed. On the other hand, if you just want to see everything, not simply papers that have come out since your last run of the search, all you would need to do is click on the name of the search. So here, I'll click on example, and that then brings me back to the full set of results, so the 396 that we had a few moments ago. The other thing you may wish to do is export your results. Now this is fairly simple on Scopus, you'll tick the lines that you wish to save. It can be all of them, you'll see at the very top of the list you've got an all checkbox. And then you may choose to save them to a list within your account on Scopus, or more likely you'll choose to export them. You'll find the export option in the header of the results section, and if you click on the little downwards arrow, that will pop up with a screen that gives you your export options. 
Firstly, you'll select what type of file you want to export, and I would suggest in most cases the RIS or RIS format is the most useful. Alternatively, the CSV will get you the records within Excel. The other formats have use, but I have to say RIS is probably the most commonly used among programs that you're likely to want to upload the results into. The other element you can customise is exactly which fields are included in the downloaded records. You can see I've got the citation information and the references, but nothing else. If I was screening, I would certainly include the abstract and keywords line as well, and it may be that other elements are also of interest, but you can pick and choose here what's most relevant for you. Once you've done that, all you would do is click the export button, and that will then trigger the download for you. So those are the key functions within Scopus, but before we finish the video, I want just to show you a few of the extra things you can do. Now you may have noticed that on the results screen you get a column that tells you how many papers have cited each of the results you've got. So in this first example we can see 75 papers have cited the parent-based treatment etc result that we have on screen. If we click into the papers record we're able to see on the right hand side of the page a list of all of the documents that came later and which cited this paper incredibly helpful and you'll see they're just the most recent on the screen but there's a view all 75 citing documents at the bottom of the list so you could pull the whole list up. Scopus also gives you a list of related documents so this is based on Scopus's own metadata and its users behaviors this will be a much longer list often though you find useful bits in here and not forgetting, you also get a list of papers that are referenced within the paper you're looking at, and you can quickly click through to any of these. You're also able to look at the authors if you want to see what else they've published. So if I click on the lead author, we can see other documents. And if I pull up their full profile, I'll be able to not only see other documents they've published, but also the total of papers that have cited them, I can see who they've written with most often, which topics their papers are most often tagged under in Scopus, and in fact from the topics page I can pull up an overview of that topic area which tells me the most representative in Scopus's view papers on that area, the authors who have the most papers attached to that keyword. You can also see the words that are used most commonly in records of papers that are tagged with this keyword, which can be great for generating new terms when you're running your search. There's more even than this that you can do in Scopus, but I hope this has been a really useful introduction to the platform and shown you some of the key things you can do with it.